So Moorabbin is the major training aerodrome in Victoria and we sit about five nautical miles south east of the edge of Melbourne's airspace. We're very lucky in the fact that we're surrounded by G airspace and you can depart Moorabbin without speaking to Melbourne but you really want to give them a wide berth. It's, there's a lot of activity going on and with Essendon co-located with Melbourne, you know, there's a lot of training aerodromes and training flights that also pass through that airspace. One of the things that Moorabbin uses, for example, uh, depending on which direction you're entering the control zone from, is intermediate reporting points. For example, coming in from the east via the GMH reporting point, ATC might get you to report at Parkmore Shopping Centre. It's important, therefore, for pilots who are perhaps unfamiliar with Moorabbin airspace, when they do provide their inbound call at the inbound reporting points, just add on to your radio call that you are unfamiliar with the aerodrome, and ATC will certainly be sure to hold your hand and, and bring you in knowing where you are. All the reporting points here for VFR traffic into Moorabbin, 1500 feet, um, calling the tower, notifying that your intentions with the ATIS, etc. And circuit entry instruction constitutes a clearance to enter the Moorabbin control zone, joining the circuit as instructed, usually at 1000 feet on a leg of the circuit. Pilots should also be aware that aircraft overflying the Moorabbin control zone for destinations beyond Moorabbin usually overfly at 1500 feet and helicopters operating inside the Moorabbin control zone are at 700 feet. If you're coming down from the north, you're more than likely you want to come via the Kilmore Gap, which gives you that low terrain in case there is cloud. And it also gives you a good visual reference from flying there back towards Moorabbin Airport via the east, which keeps you clear of control steps. Once you get to Kilmore, you're then heading into the southeasterly direction. You've got an adequate number of features to follow in order to bring you to a position say around the Sugarloaf area, which then you can then change direction again and head south, clear of control steps, clear of any terrain, and come in via one of the recommended VFR approach points into Moorabbin, which is our D airspace. The recommended VFR approach point there would probably be the Academy. Now once you get to there, of course, you need to be quite familiar with what procedures you have to follow, because that point is only around about eight miles from Moorabbin Airport. You can't be then deciding or thinking about what you want to do. You should have that in mind before you actually reach that point. Avalon is a fairly friendly airspace. There's a lot of activity over there, not so much airline activity, but more training activity, and especially the IFR training activity. And that can be happening at any time. Yeah, you must continue to monitor where you are, because map reading is the basis of navigation, and you've got your chart there. It's a fairly good chart. This chart, the VTC chart that you're going to use, is not only topographical, but there is an overlay there. Coming from the west, it actually is high terrain as you approach Bacchus Marsh. Then you find the terrain drops away and the steps are there and you must make sure again that you are at or recommended to be below those steps as you come past Bacchus Marsh. Now you then got to negotiate your way up towards Brighton, which is one of the recommended VFR approach points. And you do that usually by the uh, bomb tower, which is the, the Met Department's uh, radar, weather radar tower. Once you're there, you, you're fairly close to uh, Melbourne control zone and indeed places like Point Cook, and then head off towards Brighton, which is fairly uh, easy to find. Brighton is fairly distinctive because it's got the Brighton baths, and the baths actually are a fairly unique setup. It's a sea baths and you can see it quite clearly from the air, plus the marina is there as well. And then you've got, again, one of those intermediate approach points that may be given to you, which is the oval, the Moravan Oval, and uh, that can be difficult to spot. It's important for fixed wings to be aware that there are a lot of helicopters operating at Moravan and that they need a really good situational awareness of who's around and who's flying and what's going on around them. The operations here at Moorabbin are unique in that we have two helipads, one on either end north-south of the aerodrome. The northern helipad is used primarily for the operators up there or anyone going to that specific area, but any itinerant aircraft or the main helipad is the southern helipad. Helicopters do primarily fly the same routes in and out. We have the same reporting points. Within three miles of Moorabbin, our requirement is to be at 700 feet AGL. The fixed wing are at 1,000 feet, so that gives us altitude separation. The critical areas are where either descending to our 700 and the fixed wing are descending to 1,000. So there is some areas that we are at the same altitude. From Brighton, the normal procedure that we suggest is coastal via Cerberus. You can go straight into the northern helipad, but what that does, it puts you to be very cautious of being at the same altitude as the fixed wing who are joining from Brighton. Fixed wing are at 1,500 feet on descent to 1,000 feet. The helicopters are at 1,000 feet on descent to 700 feet at some point. So some point in the middle here, we're at the same height. We try and avoid that. 
come down coastal at 700 feet. Fixed wings and helicopters can operate at the same level. The pilots will ask us for a clearance in that area just to let us know what's going on. So we'll make a note of the level that you want. So if you want to transit at 500 feet, we'll most likely give it to you. And then we'll let you know about the other traffic that's in the area. So we really need you to let us know what level you want to fly at and we'll let you know about the traffic that's around. Fixed wing pilots need to be aware that the helicopters are there and that we are small and slower. The most important thing is to check the area, clear the turns and have great situational awareness. Be not in a tunnel where you're just listening to what you've asked for, that you hear other aircraft and if you hear another aircraft doing something, how is that going to affect you and your safety? Moorabbin's entry procedures are slightly different from other Metropolitan D aerodromes. Um, when you enter the zone at three miles, we need you to be at 1,000. And when you depart the zone, we like you to climb up to 2,000 as soon as possible. This provides us with a level of separation and expectation that will reduce the amount of traffic that we can give, which reduces the radio congestion and increases the safety in the air. So when you come inbound, be at 1,000 feet, at three miles and if you can't let us know. If you come into Moorabbin for the first time I would highly recommend that you read the documents and be up to date with what's going on. Understand that it is a major training aerodrome so it's possible that we could have up to eight in the circuit at a time with arrivals and departures. So that's a lot of people trying to fight for frequency time. If you are giving us your life story and all of the information that we don't need you're actually holding up other pilots. So what we need is exactly what's in AIP, who you are, where you are, your level, and what your intentions are with Uratus. Robert Tower, helicopter November Delta Victor is the Academy 1300 inbound for the Southern Helipad and received Romeo. November Delta Victor, Robert Tower, joint downwind for the Southern Helipad, reported three miles. And then your readbacks, we just want the bare minimum. So just the runway that you've been assigned. We don't need to know that you are going to follow the third Cessna that's on base and you know just let us know that yep you have it and if you don't have it that's okay too just let us know that you don't and we'll update you. So at Moorabbin we're looking for an exact call, very professional, just read back what's required and you know not everything else. Moorabbin can be very busy at times. Uh, there'll be some instances where you simply can't get your call in. Um, if that's the case, before you get to three miles, we'll expect you to turn around and head back to where you came and try again. If you do get your call in and we are too busy to take you, for example, on the eastern side, it's not unusual for us to overfly you to the western side. So that would be an instruction of maintain 1,500 overfly the field and contact the tower 1230. So you just need to read those things back. And then what will happen is when you contact the tower overhead, they'll just sequence you into the western side. So Moorabbin is very lucky that we are surrounded by G airspace. However, there are some high intensity areas that you need to be aware of. There's a danger area to the northwest of Moorabbin, which is parachuting operations. It's near Point Ormond, just north of Brighton and south of Essendon. If you're going to fly through that area, I highly recommend that you contact Melbourne Radar on 135 Day Small 7. They're in charge of that area and they'll know whether the parachutes are in the air or not. Around the Melbourne control zone, historically there are about three or four places uh, around the Melbourne control zone where we tend to have a lot of airspace infringements. That is, aircraft entering controlled airspace or restricted airspace without the appropriate clearance. There's an airspace infringement hotspot at 30 DME or 30 miles north of Melbourne on the 30 DME arc of airspace, a 4,000 foot step and that tends to catch a lot of pilots out, uh, either climbing out of Melbourne underneath the steps or descending into Melbourne. The other hot spot is around the Yan Yin Reservoir area, around the Eastern Lane, just north of the Sugarloaf Reservoir. It's a unique place in our airspace architecture here in the Melbourne zone where we have four boundaries of airspace all intersecting at the one place, each with essentially a different lower limit. Pilots need to be very sure of their navigation around that eastern lane to make sure that they do keep below the control area steps. There's also a hot spot just north of Melbourne Airport near the Riddles Creek area. The gap between the ground level and the bottom of controlled airspace is very tight there. Pilots need to be very aware of their positioning and also accurate height holding. And probably the last area that causes some consternation around uh, pilots and confusion is around the Westgate Bridge area where we have a 1500 foot step abutting up against the Melbourne control zone. Be aware that ATC can bring heavy jet aircraft down to only 500 feet above the lower limit of controlled airspace. So accurate height holding, correct Q&H is essential. There's a danger area 
are located to the southeast of Moorabbin, uh, basically in the Moorabbin training area. The problem with the danger, of course, is that uh, people tend to think that all the, all the action's taking place in that area and they're less vigilant flying outside that area and haven't got a problem, which is not the case at all. They should be vigilant at all times when it comes to traffic. At Moorabbin we have very few airspace infringements. We need you to be reported inbound and giving a joint instructions by three miles. The biggest confusion that exists here with the VFR routes southbound along the coast on the western side of Moorabbin. So the standard VFR route actually doesn't come into Moorabbin's three miles airspace, but it actually takes you off the coast at Ricketts Point. So if you want to follow the coastline all the way, then you need to just ask us and we'll clear you through the zone. That way we'll be able to give you all the traffic that's around and you'll also get traffic on a lot of aircraft that are on final or departing, depending on the runway direction.